Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. I'm Johnny Chivers. For those of you who are new here, I'm a data engineer with over 10 years experience working Monday to Friday within AWS. Today, this is a quick video to look at my top five Linux commands that I use on a daily basis while doing data engineering in AWS. The idea behind these commands is that we have data in S3 and we want to look at it really quickly or we want to do a really quick transformation on it. To do this, I use the Cloud9 environment where we get a Linux console spun up. I will take you through the process of setting up that Cloud9 environment, but there is a more in-depth video on the channel. As always, I'll provide the data that's available on GitHub in the link below. And really with that being said, we just need to jump onto the console, get things set up, and I'll show you my top five commands. Okay guys, that's me logged into the AWS console as usual. The first thing we want to do is spin up a Cloud9 environment. So if you type in Cloud9 at the top as usual, right hand click and I'm just going to open that into a new tab. Once on Cloud9, you want to create environment. You want to give the environment a name, so I'm just going to call this Top 5 Linux for Data Engineering. Give a wee description. This is the instance for Top 5 Linux commands in AWS. And hit next step. Configure settings. We want to create a direct access environment. You can use the free tier, so go on ahead and click that one if you want. The data is small enough, you should be able to do it on the micro. I'm gonna use the small instance just because I can. It doesn't cost that much, probably a couple of cents for the time that we have it up. Leave it on Amazon Linux 2. Let it turn off after 30 minutes, so if you leave it up by accident after this tutorial, it'll shut down after 30 minutes and won't cost you anything. Then when ready, click next step. And just double check everything is correct here. Top five Linux DE. This is the instance for or top five Linux commands. EC2, small, Amazon Linux 2. Turn off after 30 minutes, really important. And it's going to create a new rule. Create environment. While this is going on and configuring, it'll take a couple of minutes. Navigate to the GitHub link in the description. I've made the data that we're going to use available for free. As you can see, it's this customer CSV. Click code and download a zip. This will download as a zip file. I'm going to save that. I'm going to open that on the side um, here, and then you can see that I have the data ready to go. Back over here and onto Cloud9, you'll see that it has spun up. Fantastic. I'm just going to minimize that down, and we're just going to work out of this home directory. So the next thing we need to do is get the data off my local machine or our local machines and up into AWS. For this, you'll need an S3 bucket. I already have one created called Cloud9 Johnny Chairs Dev. If not, pick an existing S3 bucket you have that you wish to work from, or alternatively, just go into the console and create one by the create bucket. There is a video on this YouTube channel on how to create S3 buckets if you need to have a look. Otherwise, go to upload in the bucket of your choice, click add files, go to the customers.csv file that I already downloaded which is that one there, I was in the wrong directory there, sorry. So customers.csv, open, it's not that big a file, so it's not gonna cost us too much money and upload. In fact, it'll be well within the free tier. Now we have the customers.csv file up on our S3 bucket of our choosing and ready to go. I'm gonna leave this open because we'll come back to it in a second to copy a few things off it. Back on the Cloud9, you'll have a terminal down the bottom. If you lose this terminal at any point, you go to Windows, New terminal and you get a new terminal. So that's Windows, new terminal, and you get a new terminal. Alternatively, you can click the plus button here and go new terminal and that's a new terminal. So just to repeat that to get a terminal up if you do lose it, Windows, new terminal, or alternatively, this plus button, new terminal. But for now, we'll just work on this open terminal as we logged in. Now for my first command that I use on a daily basis, and this number one command is something I find personally really useful. Let's say we get a file in and it's absolutely massive. So I know this one's only 1.9, 192 kilobits, sorry. I work with files on a daily basis that are 20, 30, 40, 100, 200 gig. And obviously we can't drag that all across into Cloud9 and then work with it in a reasonable fashion. We might just wanna look at it as a sample first or our data analyst might say, just give me the top of the file. This is the best command for just dragging out maybe the first couple of hundred rows, hundred thousand rows, or a couple of gig of a file that might be terabits in size just to have a look at. And that command is the AWS S3 
API command. So this is an in-depth command for AWS S3. But what I find most useful this command is that I can specify the range in terms of bytes of data that I want. So I do not have to bring the whole file across. I bring a range of the file across in bytes. And that's done by git hyphen object. Then you need the name of the bucket, which is actually, sorry, double dash bucket. Then the name of the bucket that you want to bring the data out of. So in this case, it is this bucket here. You'll have your own bucket name. So just copy, I'm just going to paste that in. Then it's hyphen hyphen key. And if you jump back onto your S3 console, your key is down here on the left. So just copy that across and paste that in. The next argument is hyphen hyphen range. So this is the range of data we want to bring in. I'm going to specify it in bytes because my file is quite small. So bytes equals zero. So that's from zero bytes up to, I'm going to say 20,000 bytes. So bring me in the first 20,000 bytes of the file. And the last thing to do is specify the file name that we want to call it when it gets in. So I'm going to call this dot forward slash. So that means this directory. And then we'll just call it customers hyphen csv dot csv and hit enter. And as you can see, you get this response message back on the console and our data has appeared on the left hand side. I can't open this file up because it's only 88 rows. If I was working with something over, I think it's two megabits, you cannot open it in this viewer. So that's really important to remember for the rest of this video. In this example, we can see the data, but in larger data sets or larger data sources, depending on our range, we won't be able to view the data. So I'm just gonna quickly clear the console so we have nothing on it. Oh, clear. And this brings us on to my next command that I use on a daily basis in Linux, and that's the head command. Head is showing me the top of the file. So if I type in head dot for this directory, forward slash, and then if we type in cust, and if you wanna have an autocomplete, just hit tab. So just hit tab and it'll autocomplete for you. This shows us the top of the file, as you can clearly see, the first 11 rows. But let's say, hey, I want to see more than the first 11 rows. I want to see the first 20 rows. So it's head hyphen n as the argument, and then the number of rows you want to see. So head hyphen n number of rows, then dot forward slash for this directory, then csu, and then if you hit tab on your keyboard, it will complete the rest, the file name for you. Hit enter. So this command brings back the first 20 lines of the file as Linux sees it. It's not the first 20 rows of the file per se, as in if you had it open in Excel, it's the first 20 lines. And that's really critical with this command. We're not looking at possibly rows, it's looking at lines of the file. So with that being said, then my next favorite command is actually tail because it lets you see the bottom rows or lines of the file. So if you type in tail dot forward slash and then Autocomplete again with cust. That brings back the kind of bottom couple of lines of the file. I'm just going to clear that quickly and type that in again. And that's easier to see. So you can see that we're actually now looking at the bottom of the file. And again, if you want to bring in just a certain amount of rows, it's tail hyphen n, number of rows you want, and then the bottom of the file, which is that. So that's the last 20 lines of the file as we see them or as the Linux environment sees them. So that's really critical. So that's the tail command. So that's head and tails. The fourth command that I use on a daily basis is the sed command. And this command is actually to take samples of the file. So sed is an in-place stream editor. It looks at row by row, which means if you're working with large volumes of data in Linux, you won't fill up the memory. Actually CPU based, where you're looking at the entire file a line at a time. So sed is the library and it comes inbuilt into this Linux instance for us. And again, for the number of rows, two quotes, Go back inside the quotes, start at zero, then a little tilde, so that little curly, curly, squiggly line, 5p. So give me a sample of every fifth line as it sees the file. Again, go into the directory of this file, and this little greater than sign means output from the customer hyphen CSV file to the new file that will give it a name. So I'm going to call this one customer hyphen sample.csv hit enter and you can see that it appears up here. And this time we're just looking at every fifth line as 
the Linux editor actually sees the data. Which brings me on to my final command, and I love this one. When you need to do a little bit of quick transformations on the data in place so it fits an algorithm or a data analyst can put it into a model really quickly, again, you can use the said editor. So said is so good. And this time we're going to look at a find and replace function. So no matter how big your data is, said will look at this line by line. And this has its advantages when you're working with massive data sets because you don't need a lot of RAM. You're looking at it line by line. So you'll never get one of those out of memory errors with said, which is fantastic. So it's said, then S, which stands for string, then forward slash. And what we want to do in this case is the false that you can see here. We want to change that to a lowercase f. So we want to find false and we want to change it to lowercase f. So we type in false, so string, search strings, find false, then another forward slash, replace that with f, then another forward slash, add a g command for global. So let's just run over that one last time. s at the start for search string, false is the word we're looking for, f is what we want to replace it for, and g means globally, do it in the entire file. And then it's the input file, so it's customers hyphen csv, the greater land sign again because we need a new output file and it's dot oh, it's dot forward slash and then the name of the file uh, that we want to call this where we're going to replace false with f so i've just called it customer hyphen f dot csv hit enter and then as you can see as you can see we have a new file where we've replaced false with F. So that's it for my top five Linux commands on AWS. This is something I use on a daily basis every day in my work. I think they're vital to know and especially when you can run them all inside that Cloud9 environment. As usual, I'll make all this information for free on my website, www.johnnychivers.co.uk, link in the description below. Please like and subscribe to the channel because it really helps me out in terms of these videos. And until next time, guys, thanks for watching.